This is Weekly Woman by Jubilance for PMS. Well, it is so nice to get to have you, Dana. We've been talking for a while, and I'm so excited to hear more about Red Drop. So welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me here, and thank you for your patience. I really appreciate you sticking it out with me, but I'm so happy to be here. Yeah, amazing. Okay, so can you tell us where you are in the world right now? I am in Atlanta. I am uh, born. I was born and raised in Atlanta, and uh, this is my home. And I am in my comfy little office in Atlanta. <laughs> That's amazing. I was actually in Atlanta for the first time in November, and I loved it. Um, uh, it's just beautiful, and all the different neighborhoods. I I just fell in love. <laughs> Atlanta is definitely a special place. It really is. It has. Um, it really has kind of the best of all worlds. You can slow down, you can go fast, you can have good food, good nightlife. Um, so yeah, come back. Yeah, come I back. have to. <laughs> yeah, the food was so good. I had so much barbecue and it was just a dream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to come back. And when you come back, I'll take you to a couple of hidden gems. You know? Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Um, and so you started Red Drop. Um, can you talk a little bit about what is Red Drop to our uh, listeners? Sure. So Red Drop is a company that I started, uh, co-founded with uh, Monica Williams, who is a family friend. Um, and really how it came to be um, is that I am a lifelong educator. I uh, started off as a teacher, um, teaching uh, drama and uh, reading. And um, honestly, the first, um, my first experience in teaching, I, um, my middle school was the um, school for the girls foster group home. Hmm. And it impact me, impacted me greatly for a couple of reasons. Um, I am adopted. Um, and so, of course, I could see myself in those girls, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then I just realized, like, there, you know, is a subset of people, of humans, who, who don't have all of the things that they need, which is mm -hmm. really crazy to me. And these are girls, right? And so, you know, I just started giving them products, you know, products. And then what happened is that I transitioned and started teaching somewhere else. And then I had the opportunity to teach at a single gender school, which you're talking about 20 girls <laughs> <laughs> all in one class. And you're like, oh my God, like literally this is what I decided to do every day. Oh my God. But they must all be going through PMS like at the same time. <laughs> at the same time, at the same time. So this was a fifth grade girls class. And the irony in it which I think back, I look back, uh, my oldest daughter, Sterling, who is about to approach 24, was in the class. I taught my own daughter, that's crazy. And more than half of those girls started their periods with me hmm. at school. Wow. With the exception of my own daughter. So, you know, they were starting their periods with me and you had the whole kind of gamut, right? You know, some girls were prepared. They, you know, at least they understood what a period was. They understood, you know, their body, et cetera. And then you had girls who had no idea what was happening to them. You know, I tell a story where I had a girl who asked me, you know, we were in the bathroom stall and the, you know, she asked me, Ms. Roberts, am I dying? And I was <gasps> like, no, baby, you're not dying. Like, and it really touched me and, and to be transparent, it touched me because I could see my daughter. Like, mm -hmm. and I was like, oh my gosh, like this cannot happen for my daughter. And, and by that time I also had another daughter. Um, and so I was just looking at my two girls and I was like, I have a responsibility, A, to ensure that this never happens, B, to ensure that I wouldn't place anybody else, you know, stakeholder or caretaker in this situation where they're having to navigate my own daughter's kind of emotional trauma with a mm -hmm. natural bodily function. And so I made a pact to myself. I was like, this isn't gonna happen. 
Um, I am going to put together these little kits and, you know, I'm going to make sure all my girls have them. And we just got to a point, you know, at school where they knew where to go for products, but also they knew to come to me and for mm -hmm. us to have very candid um, conversations about their body. In unison, I was equally surprised that <laughs> the adult women that I was interacting with as their parents or caretakers were as equally traumatized for the most part. Wow. Yeah, and that was really surprising to me because my mother was very open mm -hmm. with me. Um, and, you know, I had, I have, you know, you know, memories of parents, of, of moms crying on the phone with me about their daughter. Some, of course, crying because they didn't feel like they prepared them. They felt a little guilty. Some were, you know, oh my gosh, my daughter's a woman, you know, those things. And I just realized that I didn't want that. Like, I, I really had the opportunity to try to shift the narrative of a natural bodily function and, and impact as many girls as I could. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I went to my, my, I, I call her my god sister, Monica, and she's a serial entrepreneur. And at that time, she was working on a venture called Passimal. It was where you had the pacifier with the little stuffed animal. She created that. Oh, cool. And, <laughs> yeah. And um, she, my niece, her daughter, my niece was a baby at that time. And she was like, looking at me like, that sounds great. Like your idea sounds great, but she really didn't see the value in it because her baby was an infant, hmm. you know? Yeah. And, <laughs> and she's a doctor, by the way. <laughs> and so um, fast forward like 10 years, I'm still kind of doing the things that I'm doing collectively. And she calls me and she says, I need to talk to you. Remember that idea you had? And I was like, yeah, because Mackenzie about, is about to start her period. So let's talk about it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and um, that's how, you know, the next kind of journey of Red Drop was born. And we um, looked at it holistically together and, you know, how could we really impact girls? And we started just to be very intentional about what we offered. So mm -hmm. we realized that the pads or products in the stores weren't really truly made for girls. Mm -hmm. And and even the teen products, like if you're talking about a girl who is, you know, about to transition to her first period, you know, you're talking about fifth, sixth grade girls, their frames are, you know, their body frame is made up different. Mm -hmm. You know, they it's just a, it's just a different experience, you know? And so that's where we, we landed that we were going to make an impact, you know, to create products for girls as they transition to their first periods and beyond. Mm -hmm. um, and that's how Red Drop really came to be. <laughs> um, yeah. And we launched in the pandemic. <laughs> wow. So, oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Um, we launched in the pandemic. And it was honestly the best time because people were at home and we were able to have real conversations. You couldn't go anywhere, you know, so it's like, we're going to sit here and have this conversation. And uh, we've been kind of full steam ahead ever since. That's amazing, Dana. I can't believe like, it's like this idea that you had so early on and then have finally realized um, it just took your friend to like have their child be menstruating as well. So <laughs> Yeah, I mean, but you know what, that's really kind of the trend, you mm -hmm. know, excuse me, is that, you know, we don't, when you really think about it, women, you know, um, don't remember their first period until, honestly, they're forced to remember it. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. that usually comes with some type of, I hate to say it, but either a traumatic experience, right? Or you're forced to um, remember it with your own daughter or niece or, you know, mm -hmm. whatever girl in your life. Um, and so you're starting to try to, you know, recollect, you know, 
your first period and for some of us that was a you know a while ago and um it just there's a kind of a gap right a gap of memory a gap of you know um what was the norm back then when we started Mm -hmm. you know versus you know girls today and their access to technology and different information um and so women you know (laughs) since I started this business you know women come up to me all the time they're like I want to tell you I remember my first time and I'm like you do (laughs) (laughs) you do okay well tell me about it and it's usually um either very traumatic right or Mm -hmm. very easy you know yeah there's no in between there Mm -mm. But what I learned is that women do want to talk about it. Mm. You know, it is a memory um, and it is, it's something that they do want to really articulate and really kind of get it out and be able to have the conversation about it where it's not under kind of this umbrella of being a a taboo or like a Mm -hmm. secret, you know? Yeah. And I love that about Red Drop and just even like your social media presence, you're really going after and talking about what this is because so much about Red Drop is the education component. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. So, um, you know, me, you know, the teacher in me, right. Um, that was a really big part because what I realized was, you know, early on, I was giving girls products, but I really needed to like, honestly walk them through the process of how you even use a pad, what is going on with your body, like, no, baby, you you know, you might not get another period for a couple of months, or even a year after your first period, you know, Mm -hmm. Um, and so realizing that there was such a gap of of knowledge, then, you know, part of Red Drop's mission is to educate and empower. And so uh, we actually just launched an eight part um, puberty series Hmm. where, you know, you can, you can, you know, in the comfort of your home, um, we have a medical student who walks you through anatomy, biology, um, how to like use a tampon, how to use a pad, like real demonstrations because- wow we take for granted, you know, that, um, moms have shared that, you know, mm-hmm. and, 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 it's, and this is, you know, I, sometimes I get feedback that, you know, we don't want a mom shame. Right. And I understand that. Um, but that's not even my intent. You know, my intent is to just say, you know what, I, I don't take for granted that somebody didn't teach their mom. Mm -hmm. You know, so now collectively together, mom and Red Drop, we're teaching her, you you know, your daughter, your girl, so we can change the trajectory of the conversation for generations to come. That's amazing. Yeah. Wow. Um, Yeah. And so necessary to talk about it, I think, and to get the conversation out there. Um, this podcast and the company I work for, for Chubulance for PMS, we're trying to get that conversation going and to say that it's not a taboo, which is why we want to have a platform for people to talk mm-hmm. about menstruation and the work that they're doing within it, which is so cool what you're doing. Thank you. I think the first step for that is separating um, menstruation period from sexuality. Right. Mm -hmm. And I Mm -hmm. say that because, um, you know, and maybe it's a South thing, (laughs) you know, but I remember getting my period and my, you know, my grandmother and my aunts were like, oh my gosh, you can have a baby now. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what? Like, I just started my period. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. And so um, a big you know, a push for us is really desexualizing periods because Mm -hmm. it is a natural bodily function, (laughs) you know? um, Yeah. Like we're not even talking about sex, right? We're not Mm -hmm. even talking about that. We're talking about, you know, really reproductive health and making sure that your body is functioning the way it's supposed to um, just for your overall health, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, And so, yeah, it's really important because 
oftentimes we, and, and that is through trauma and that is through uh, just how we've been raised generational. You know, we, we, you know, collaborate or we partner sex with periods and we mm-hmm. should not do that. Yeah. I, that just, that's so interesting because I remember my first sex ed class in fifth grade, I believe, Mm -hmm. um, was all about like having a baby and sex. And then like your period was part of that. And so I think Mm -hmm. like your idea of creating this education of just like, this is the woman's body. This is what happens. And that is so much later. Um, like they can learn about it, of course, but like this is your body and this is what happens with it. It's not this external thing that also comes. Um, yeah, I mean, you have so much time to talk about it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, it isn't going anywhere. So, I mean, really what you should want is you should want a girl to really know about every single part of her body. Mm-hmm. And I'm a firm believer, you know, that when a girl knows about her body, Um, as early as you feel like she can digest it, um, that it really empowers her to to really protect herself in other ways, Hmm. you know, because she knows like, no, like my, you know, my vagina is a sacred space. This is what happens, you know, and no, you cannot invade my personal space, you Mm -hmm. know, those things. And I think it correlates that way, but it starts with just simple education, simple Mm -hmm. conversation, you know, Um, and I think we all do the best that we can, you know, Um, and so now we're just trying to figure out with this, you know, emerging generation that has access to every single thing at their fingertips, Yeah, you know, where's the balance, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, it's like, how do you get that information to them in um, an educational way that, that doesn't Mm -hmm. traumatize, like you said. Yeah. And, and really too, um, curtails, you know, the myths, you know, that you could find, you know, (laughs) in any Google search, you know, if you, if you do a Google search about like periods and, you know, I mean, you would see some of the craziest things the craziest thing but people are actually asking those things you know oh no yes yeah that's that's true oh my mm -hmm. gosh and can you talk a little bit more about your education in the classrooms I know that you're partnering with um a teacher up in Buffalo can you talk a little bit about that oh so Miss Galante yes so Miss Galante actually was one of my former teachers when I was an administrator and uh, she moved to Buffalo. She was from Buffalo. She moved back to Buffalo from Atlanta. And what she asked for, um, she does stay in an area um, where unfortunately period poverty is real. And so what she asked for was support in really products Hmm. um, for her, for her student. And so what we did was we partnered, she started a go, um, not a GoFundMe, she started a donor shoes campaign. Mm. And she had, you know, people donate and we matched some of the donations. And so she got 750 kits for her students in um, Buffalo uh, Public City Schools. I think that's how they, they say it. Um, and then we're talking about how do we get the puberty series to her? Mm-hmm. I will tell you, it's a little harder in a in a school setting, and this sounds a little crazier, but I'm uh-huh. gonna say it. It's a little harder in a school setting because it's um, you know every state has a curriculum, right? Yeah, and, you know that curriculum is adapted to what they believe you know a girl should learn yes. at an appropriate age. Mm-hmm. Um. So if we're really going to make an impact with the puberty series, it's really going to have to be, um, I think, you know, through caretakers and through organizations that Uh. serve girls like a girl's ink or, you know, um, organizations that are very specific in their mission, girl scouts, right, to serve girls um, and uh, go through kind of those organizations. 
uh, when we talk about the puberty series. That's so interesting. I would think that like the schools would embrace something like this, but it makes sense that you have to find these external sources to be able to share um, this education series, which is yeah, disheartening I, and and just a fact. <laughs> no, it's so funny because our medical student, um, Talisha, is from Utah, which is one of the most uh, non-progressive. Good way to say that. States, mm -hmm. um, as it relates to just even learning about your body, mm -hmm. right? Um, and so that was the irony in finding her, and it, and, and really it was because she was so passionate huh. about, you know, how she, you know, um, went through school, you know, and she was like abstinent, you know, there, mm -hmm. there we go again, you know, putting sexual, you know, sex with period, they're, they're married together in their curriculum. Mm -hmm. And so um, it just, it really is problematic sometimes um, for us to go through the school or go through kind of the the state board of education mm -hmm. um, we're hoping it's going to get easier as we're having more open conversations and more states are uh, jumping on board and I'm really glad about that about you know free access of, mm -hmm. of products for wow. public institutions but we got a long way to go yes <laughs> unfortunately which is kind of why we're talking today to kind of like get that word out there. <laughs> we got a long way to go, but I mean, it's definitely better than it was when we first started, you know, when I first started this 20 plus years ago of even having a conversation about your period, you know, with, a, with anyone, you know, I, I, I do feel like there are much, people are much more open now to have mm -hmm. those conversations um which is a good thing that is a good thing um yeah I mm -hmm. uh, we'll just see how it continues to progress and I'm sure you'll be at the forefront of it <laughs> <laughs> I don't know but I hope so I hope so I hope it I hope at least um you know that we can say that we've made an impact you know mm -hmm. for girls you already um, have kind of, we're getting there you already okay. have Please. Thank you. Thank you. We're getting there. And Dana, something that I always ask on this show, and mm -hmm. it might change like the second you say it or like the next day, whatever. Um, what is your definition of womanhood? That's a good one. Um, hmm. My definition of womanhood is... Um, courageous femininity. Hmm. I'm from the South. And so my, <laughs> you know, Monica laughs at me. If she was here, she would crack up laughing, but I am very much a Southern belle, you know? Yeah. I love very feminine things. Um, but I am fierce, a kind of a fit, a feminine, a fierce lioness, you hmm. know, w when it comes to girls when it comes to children period because that's just my passion and my business and what I do every day mm -hmm. um but yeah that's what I would say womanhood is is I can't even remember what I said but a feminine co courageous femininity yeah. yeah and I love I love that idea of like the lioness in the den um I can just feel that emanating from you of like how you talk about your students and um, the work that you're doing, which is so cool. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. it. And then another thing we always ask is um, if you could give advice to your younger self, what would it be? If I could give advice to my younger self, I would tell my younger self to go after every single thing you want. Um, every single thing you want. And it's okay if you fail. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. we all fail many, many times, but um, just picking ourselves back up. And I love that going after everything you want. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, you know, um, you know, I guess as you get older, <laughs> you um, you really learn that you're, especially your mom, and it was just me and my mom, so that's my point of reference, um, was a woman too, right? Yeah. You know? And she was doing the best that she could and growing and maturing, you know, as a woman, right? And so sometimes you instill fear without even knowing you instill it, hmm. if, if that makes sense. So you're like, yeah. oh, you can do that. But, but just in case you don't get, you know, just in case, you know, you need to fall back on this or, you know, and I, I just, um, you know, with my own personal daughters, I'm like, go do whatever you want. Like my, my oldest daughter graduated from SCAD um, and she wanted to be a curator. And now she's working in uh, beauty marketing with Estee Lauder. And that's not a traditional pathway, right? Um, especially to be very honest for a black woman, you know, it's not safe if mm. I could say that. And so, but I didn't want her to be safe. I wanted yeah. her to literally go do exactly whatever you want to do. That's you know? amazing. Yeah. So and, I would tell my younger self that. Yeah. And, and what an amazing school. And then to go to Estee Lauder, is she in New York then? She is in New York. Okay. Um, she, you know, she stayed home because of the pandemic. And then she was just like, mom, I want to move to New York, even though she was working virtually. And I was like, you should, like, you absolutely should move. That's to New York. awesome. And so now she's in New York <laughs> and um, um, it's honestly very kind of a circle for me because I wanted to move to New York when I graduated high school. And my mom was like, no, like, <laughs> no, <laughs> you no. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and, and I was like well why don't you help me like I, I really was into theater into drama and she was just like that's not a safe hmm. space Dana like you know you don't know if you're gonna make it mm -hmm. and you know that really impacted me you know and so for her to be in New York doing something completely different but just in New York just kind of living her life I'm just like that's you know, amazing. Have you gone to is, visit her yet? No, I have not. Um, and that's funny too, because I'm like, my whole child is living up there. I don't know. You know, I know she's living fine. I know who she's living with. It's fine. But she's actually about to transition to her first kind of apartment. And amazing. I was like, do you want me to um, come and help you move? She's like, no. <laughs> I'm fine I got it and I'm like okay because you have to rem you know I have to go back and say Dana you prepared her for this mm -hmm. you got to take your ego out of it which is hard and be like okay I'm gonna see how she does this because I obviously have prepared her for this and we'll see what works you know You've prepared, it sounds like you've prepared all your girls, whether they're your daughters or um, the students that you've taught, you've prepared them all to be women and to be feminist and to be, to be okay about their bodies. Um, so I think that's amazing what you're doing with Red Drop and what you've done with your girls, um, all of you. them. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate that. So yeah. Dana, what is next for Red Drop? Oh my gosh, what is next for us? So we're launching, of course, the, puber the Puberty Series um, and it is live on our website. So you can go on and really we're just ramping up. We were impacted terribly by the global supply chain crisis. Oh gosh. Um, there were days that I didn't think Red Drop would exist um, because just because we were waiting or you know, our inventory was sitting on the port for months. You know, it was a really real thing for us. Um, and, you know, a real thing for us is, you know, raising capital, right? Yeah. Just trying to continue to do that and, and have that. So, I mean, I'm very happy to say that we have inventory in and we're just trying to sell, you know, we're just trying to make an impact. Um, for girls to get, you know, for them to get the products, 
Mm -hmm. um, we're starting now because we have inventory to do more face-to-face -face events because the world is opening up more. And I love that, you know, I love being able to walk girls through like, here's your period kit, let's open it up. Let's talk about, you know, how you use these products why you use them, when to use them. Mm -hmm. um, that's really my passion. Um, that's awesome. And so yeah, we're getting there and we're um, probably by the end of this year, we'll have a formal red drop foundation um, so we can make more of an impact um, through the foundation part of it. And Monica would kill me if I didn't mention this, but we're launching period panties. Oh my God, <laughs> everyone yeah. loves those. Okay, cool. You know what? I'm that Southern mama that had to be like, okay, let's talk about these. <laughs> these are these are different, right? They're very different. Um, and my oldest Sterling and my 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 middle baby Kamani, they tested them for me, cool. and they love them. You know, yeah. and I'm like, y'all really <laughs> like these? And they're like, mom, like, this is it. Like, this is what we're doing. And I, I find that so empowering. Like, you know, you can have, you know, a panty that is um, environmentally, you know, sustainable. You know, you can keep them for three, if you really, longer than that, if you take care of them. And, you know, really, like, it, it kind of curtails, like, real accidents. You know, and so I'm like, where was oh yeah, going? I could have definitely used those growing up. Oh my god, I have so many stories. <laughs> I know, I know. So that's that's what's next for us. Thank you for asking. We're we're super excited. Yeah. That's awesome, Dana. And so, how do our listeners find out more about Red Drop? How can they find you guys? Okay, well, you can find us um, on Instagram at Red Drop R E D D R O P. Um, and you can find us, our website is tryreddrop.com. Mm -hmm. And we're also on Facebook um, at Red Drop. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Dana. It was amazing Thank to you. get to talk to you today.